Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. So today what we're going to be doing is testing for a block within a certain distance of a block that's being run. So with what we're doing here is we're going to test if this block, which is at 00, zero location, so 0x zero and 0y, zero it is I think at level, it doesn't really matter what level it's at per se because we're don't need to worry about that because it's within a thousand block range so if it's within a thousand block range like it says here then what it's going to do is it's going to allow the block to basically connect if it's outside of that range like in test 2 if it's 1001 from this 00, zero location then what it's going to do is actually return false so this is the values that we should get for each test so test 1, which is 100, 100, and 100, is going to return true. If it's test 2, then it's going to return false. And the last one is for showing off the negative coordinates that it supports as well. And what that's going to do is it is within range because negative 1,000 is still 1,000 blocks away. If it was negative 1,001, then it would be over the 1,000 block limit. So what it's basically doing is that's going to return true as well. Now, if there is no block at that particular location, so I'm basically testing for this block right here, which is a target block, and if the block is there, then it's going to ch basically change the block above to a solid block. If it's not any block but that one, then it's basically just going to return error. So currently it's testing if for the location of 0, 100, 0. So obviously there's air here so there's no block there so we're the first coordinate that we need to test for is 100 100 100 so we're going to do 100 100 and 100 and then we're going to click the test button and as you can see green basically means that it's returned true we can do this by testing for the the second condition which is 1001 1001 100 and zero so this should return false which will be a red block so as you can see it's a red block and the last one is negative coordinates so negative 100 100 and negative 1000 so negative 100 negative or pardon me 100 and then negative 1000 so we're going to test and it should return true so that's basically how that works we're going to also test if the block at 0, 100, 0 is, or we could just do a random coordinate, so 200, uh, for, uh, we'll do 250, or 200, and maybe 8, 9, we'll just do a random coordinate like that, and it should return error, so basically that means that there isn't a block there, and it's not returning either a true or false variable, basically, basic, because it's not a block that we can test for. It would have been because it was like 8,000, it would have been outside of the range anyways, so it would have re returned false if it was there. All right, so let's move into Emperor and I'll show you the script that basically I have set up and we can basically learn how that all works. So there are two main procedures that are basically I am using for this particular system. You can run this particular script from anything that supports, I believe, world and X, Y, and Z, if I'm correct. Yeah, so you can run it from anything from X, Y, and Z and world conditions or dependencies. So this makes it really dynamic for what you can use it for. You can run it from an entity, you can run it from pretty much anything with it if it's within a certain range of the coordinates being tested for. I have set it up through an update tick and through a GUI so when the button is pressed the variables or the coordinates for the block that we're testing for get passed to the update tick. So well, really the target block has nothing to do with anything outside of being tested for. Uh, that's the only use for it. So there is no procedures for this. It's not really important on the settings or anything you can have it as whatever you want for settings and it won't matter so I'm not going to cover how that all works it's just a basic block you can set it up for any type of settings or anything like that 
the trigger block, we have a little bit of things going on in this particular thing. The first thing that we're doing is we've set our texture and then you can set any of the settings that you want here. Advanced settings, you might want to set the tick rate to one just so it, the update tick is, if you're using an update tick, runs a little bit faster. Um, that depends on how you want it. Again, up to you how you want to set up your block. The tile entity, we need to enable this for MBT data, and we're also going to need to set a GUI for this particular system if you're using a GUI. The GUI that we're using is the one that we have here, which I've assigned the text fields, these ones right here, as location underscore x, y, and z. So these are our text field IDs. And then for the button, what I've done is run the button from here. So back to the block, we basically allowed a right-click event. So when we right-click on the block, it will open up the GUI. We don't need an inventory, so I've set that to zero and I've disabled these two blocks here. Outside of that, there is no energy or fluid storage. And the only trigger that we have for this block is a update tick, which we'll cover in just a second. The other thing is generation. I left it at the default, so it's not generating anything. So let's go back to the GUI. Now we know that our location underscore X, location underscore Y, and location underscore Z is our text field name or IDs. So we're gonna open up our button and we're gonna see what's going on here. Don't be overwhelmed. It's actually really repetitive. These things are mostly duplicated just for the X, Y, and Z locations to run a little bit extra. So it basically can test if it's a negative number or not. So I'll cover just this section and then if you guys want to make it so it's for every coordinate, then you can basically add these two extra things, which is just a clone of this one, basically just different variables. So what we're doing is we're actually going to get the set a string uh, text local variable. Uh, we have three different local variables here. We have pause x, pause y, and pause z. And we also have a three different number variables, which is pause number um, x, or pause num x, pause num y, and pause num z. So these are our number variables that we're gonna be using. These are our string variables that we're gonna be using. So we've basically assigned our text field to our local variables to start with. And then what we're doing is we're testing if the local variables, now that we have our local variables from our text, our, our values from our text field stored to a local variable, we're basically testing if the local variable is not blank. So what we're doing is we're creating an additional condition and, and then we're putting a not statement and then we're testing if it's not the local variable equals blank. Now, if it is blank, then the game will crash. So it's important to basically run this as a test to make sure that it doesn't crash every time the button is pressed. So when you've done that, you can actually run your script from that point on. So after that, what we're doing is we're testing for a substring text. What this basically does is it tests for a position of the text that is, so if your first character is um, a negative sign or a number or something like that, then your first from position and to position is the range of where the characters will be testing for if the value is true. So what we're doing here is we're testing if the local variable from range from character one to character one, so the first character it equals a negative sign. If it's a negative sign, then what we want to do is we're going to set the local variable and then we're going to get the text from character two. So now we're basically passing off from anything after the first character from negative, that negative symbol. And then we're going to go for the length of an integer, which is eight, I believe, for characters. So it would be offsetted plus one. So we're setting it to two to nine. 
And what that will do is it will test for a range of the integer number. Now, if it is within that range, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the local variable, get number from text, and then we're multiplying this by zero. This will invert the number from a positive to a negative. Now, that's important to actually test for negative coordinates. If it's not done, then it, it, go, it won't properly work. So then what we need to do is we're going to assign a local var or a block variable. So MPT variable, uh, mod ID test location X, and this will vary depending on what variable or what coordinate you're working on. The X will change to Y or Z. And th then we're going to just basically get our local variable number. So this one right here that we basically just set. If it is a positive number, then we're just going to set our local number to the number of our text. And then, so one thing that I just noticed is we also need to basically offset the um, position of the text. So we're going to update that on our else statement as well. So from character two to character nine. And then we're going to basically get our setter number to the local variable and then we're going to just basically have that as our positive number so that's basically that's all that's happening here i'll explain how this all works again so again this is from this is the x coordinate basically testing if it's negative or positive if it's negative or positive on y and then we're also testing if it's negative or positive on z so to create all this, I will just quickly break down how this all works. So we'll start from whoop, start from scratch. So we need to set our local variable. Again, you need three string variables and three number variables. So we're going to set our local variable and then we're going to create text with and we're going to grab that block right here from the text um, tab. And then what we need to do is go to slot in GUI, and then we're going to place our get text inside text field, and then we want to assign that to our actual text field ID. So after we've done that, we have assigned that. What we need to do is basically set that for every one of our coordinates. So X, Y, and Z. I'm just going to do that one just to show you. And then what we need to do is go to and create a condition and for logic or flow control, get a if statement. And then what we need to do is basically test if the string is not uh, empty. So we're going to basically grab a light blue operator under logic and grab and, and then we're going to duplicate the, or go external input. And then we're going to place it down like that. And then we're also going to grab, go back to logic, grab a string, string operator. And we're also going to go to logic and grab a not operator or block. And then we're going to basically test if it's not. And then we need to grab a text. So it, we're going to leave this blank so it can test if it's empty. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our local variable and we're going to grab our variables for X, Y, and Z. And now you're going to fill X, Y, and Z exactly like this. So after you've done that, then what you need to do is basically test for a else if statement. So we're going to go to flow control, grab a if statement like so, and it needs an else statement attached to it. And then what we need to do is we're going to go to logic, grab a text operator, and we're going to drop that down right here. And then we're going to go to text and get substring text and then we're going to grab this block right here we're going to place that in our first condition and then what we need to do is we're going to get our local variable and we're going to place that right here and then we're going to go to math grab a number and we're going to set this to one and then we're going to duplicate this number and we're going to put that in position to position one as well and then what we need is text and we're going to get a text block and we're going to set this to a negative character so we know that we can basically test if the player is typing in a negative coordinate or not so after you've done that what we need to do is actually update the variable so we're going to set variable and then we're going to create text with so we're going to go back to text create text with 
and change this by clicking on the gear icon just to get a basically one input. And then we're going to just duplicate this uh, substring text block and we're going to place that right here. And we're going to test from con from uh, string from position two to position nine. And that's all we need to do for that particular one. Uh, we're also going to duplicate that and place that down over onto this one right here as well. And then what we need to do is get our number um, variables and we're going to go and we're going to go to numbers set number variable and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a math operator drop that down here click on the plus sign go and do the asterisk which will basically multiply it and then we're going to set this to zero for the value what that will do is we will invert the number from a positive to a negative and then what we need to do is get number from text. So we're going to go to math, get number from text, and then we're going to grab our local variable x, and then we're going to place that right down here. And then what that will do is it will basically get the, the text, multiply it by zero, which will invert it to a negative number. And then all we need to do is go to block, per, block procedures and grab a number MBT tag for the block. And then we're going to just remove the zero and we're going to go to local variables, get our number lo uh, local variable. And then we're gonna obviously set this to our actual tag, MBT tag that we're gonna be assigning to the block. So that's basically the negative coordinates all settled. Now we need to duplicate the set lo number location. And we're just gonna remove the math operator on this one and we're gonna drop the number from text to that. So it's basically just assigning the positive number to the text field or to the variable. And then we can just basically duplicate this one as well and leave it to the same. Now you need to do that for your X, Y, and Z, or your y and Z coordinates as well. So you can basically just duplicate this after, update your Y, uh, your coordinates from your position and all these different um, variables. So you basically update that to your Y ones. So again, this would be Y, that would be uh, Y as well. This would be Y, that would be Y, this would be Y as well. That's gonna be Y, that's gonna be Y, that's gonna be Y, and that's gonna be Y. And now that all your variables are updated to Y, you can do that again for your, your Z. Now this will also need to be updated. So you have your Y and you're gonna to need to update this as well. So you have your Y and Z coordinates like so. So after you've done that, you can move on to your Z coordinates and you basically have something like this above. So let's move on to the other part of the procedure where the actual testing takes place. Okay, so for the other one, we have the update tick now that we got the basic um, number, the coordinates taken care of, we now need to test if the block is within that certain range. So the other one was basically just testing for the string of the number basically and converting it into a positive or negative number which we could later use into this procedure here. So what we're doing here is we're setting two different types of variables. There is a distance variable, x, y, and z, and then there is a position variable, x, y, and z. So what we need to do is we're actually going to get our MBT tag that we've assigned for the block, and then we're going to go and we're going to set that to a local variable for x. Now that's gonna be important for the next step, which we're going to assign the distance variable to absolute, which will test if it's within a positive number range from the 100 to uh, basically whatever value we set it to. So if it's absolute, and then we're gonna test for the coordinates. So it's always going to return a positive number depending on what regardless on what direction it goes. So if we're testing for x coordinates and we want to basically test if the number which 
this is the coordinates. So we're testing if the coordinates is basically a, say it's negative 1000. Uh, then with absolute, it's going to convert that into 1000. So we can basically test if it's within a certain range. So we're gonna set that to our distance. Now that's important for later on when we actually test for the distance is equal to 1000. Because if we didn't go with absolute, then we would have to also test for negative 1000. So it's easier just to go with absolute to basically make it a solid number for or a positive number so we can basically just test it once. Um, other than that, the only other thing is we're running the script on the server side so we can basically run out or uh, don't have any errors when we're actually placing or removing the block either. So with absolute, again, it's just converting it into a solid number with the coordinates here. We have assigned the coordinates for each value, how far the text input, so text input X, text input Y, and text input Z are all assigned to local variables now. Uh, they were stored to the block MBT variables, and then we're passing it over to a local variable again in a different procedure. So we're basically just testing if the X is minus the coordinates of the current block. So if the current block is, say, zero, then we're just subtracting the, the number from the input from the text field. So if it's negative 1000, then it basically goes, okay, negative 1000, is it um, from zero, then it's gonna go, okay, so zero, minus 1000, negative 1000, that equals 1000 because we're changing it to a positive number and then it's assigning it to the distance variable. So this basically converts the negative to a positive and if it's a positive, then it's still gonna be a positive. All right, so that's basically, that's all that's happening there. Again, it's converting any value into a distance that we can later test for. Then we're testing if it's on server side, and then we're going to test for the pause X, pause Y, and pause Z, so with the text field location. And then we're gonna test for that for a block here. If that's true, then we're going to run this, which is we're gonna get the distance that we basically calculated. If it's equal to or less than 1000, and then we're going to run, if that's true, then we're going to test if the y is equal to or less than 1000 and we're also going to test if z is equal to or less than 1000. If all those variables are true, if x, y, and z are equal to or less than 1000, then what we're going to do is we're going to basically place a green block to let us know that it's true. If not, then it's going to be a red block. Now if the block is not located there, then we're just basically replacing it with error. All right, so you guys are probably wondering how to create this particular part. Now, most of you will probably understand the simple setup here, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I'll just cover how this part is set up. So again, we have three or six variables, three for distance and three for position. So we need to set our position for X, Y, and Z. So we're gonna set local variable and we're gonna set that to our X. And I'll just do X for the beginning so you guys can see how it's all set up. Uh, you can, you'll can you have to do this for your Y and Z coordinates as well. So we're gonna get our block for MBT tag. We're just gonna assign that to our local variable like so, and we need to get the tag name. So exactly like that. That's all that's happening with that particular block. So again, this MBT tag is under block procedures, and then you scroll down, it's right there. Our local variable is under custom variables and we're just gonna get that one right there. And after we've done that, what we need to do is basically assign the distance variable. So we're gonna grab our distance and then we're gonna select our distance one for X. And then we need to go to math and then go and grab this block right here. The one that says rounded and we're gonna click on that button and then we're gonna scroll, scroll down. It says absolute and we're gonna set that to that. Next, we need to go back to math and we're gonna grab a math operator 
and we're going to subtract the coordinate that we're currently working on. So we're going to go to math, uh, Minecraft components. For x, you're going to want x coordinates, y, you want y coordinates, and z, you want z coordinates. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to custom variables and set the um, the the number that we're basically subtracting to our x position. So it's exactly like so. And then what you can do is just run the if on server side. So again, we're going to grab this an if statement. We're going to grab a not operator. So under logic, not, and then we're going to go to world data, and then we're going to run that on server side. And you're going to put your code into this part right here. So like that. Outside of that, that's all that I'm going to be covering today. If you want the procedure, then I am going to provide that in the uh, description for the project page, and then you guys can download the procedures and the workspace as well as any textures that I've created for your mods. So thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, uh, please consider subscribing, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.